Hello and welcome to MaryCast. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli, Professor of Theology and Mariology at the Franciscan University of Steubenville. And we're talking about the Day of Dialogue that happened in Rome. Look, my friends, uh, you can look at the headlines of world news. I think this is something that would be headlining in church news. I think it was a historic event, and I think it can have and will have historic fruits, especially insofar as it's going to lead in some real way, I believe, to a solemn definition. Now, that's according to God's timing and the Holy Father's discernment, but I think we have all, all the earmarks of that. And so, in our segments, uh, in this little mini-series, we talked about what's going on in this day of dialogue. Well, in the afternoon session, there was a question from the audience, and it's an important question, so I want to deal with it on our program. The question was, essentially, how can you define a dogma and why would you want to when it's going to just impose a truth upon people and an obligation to believe a truth that could lead to some people leaving? If it's already a doctrine, then why would you impose this as a dogma on the church? Okay. Now, Bishop Bagobiri of Nigeria gave, I think, an inspired response to this. He says, first of all, you have a misunderstanding of the concept of Catholic dogma. Catholic dogma does not impose itself. Catholic dogma proposes the truth. And then it's up to individuals to make the choice about whether they want to be Catholic or not be Catholic. That's always up to the individual. But the better articulated a truth is, the more clearly it's, it's articulated and, and, and specified, the better scriptural base it has, the more clear references from tradition, the more clearly and, and boldly it's proclaimed, the more people assent to the truth. That's the purpose of a dogma. Uh, Pius IX told us uh, that a dogma is a perfection of a doctrine. It's for the faithful, for their optimum acceptance, their optimum understanding, and therefore receptivity. So, a dogma is not something imposed, it's something proposed as an objective truth. And Bishop Bagoberry, I think, said very well, and again, you can always go hear his talk, you can go to InsideTheVatican.com and uh, look at his talk directly. Um, he said, when you're talking about a dogma, a truth, it's true even if no one believes it. It's an objective truth. It's an ontological truth. And it's the church's mission to continue to convey and proclaim and define when it sees necessary revealed ontological objective truth. An individual always has the freedom. A Catholic exercises of freedom insofar as being Catholic or not. Well, my friends, this is just a matter of logic. You can say, I'm a member of this club. If you are a member of this club, you have to do the things that are part of this club. If I'm a member of this institution, I have to do the things as part of this institution, or the institution will say you're no longer part. So, the freedom comes in being Catholic. The freedom does not come in choosing which dogmas or doctrines we want. But the church proposes truth, and then it's free for an individual to say yes or no. It's also important to note that these truths about Our Lady, that she's the spiritual mother of all peoples, co-redemptrix, mediatrix of all grace and advocate, this is already doctrine of the church. That means, according to the Second Vatican Council, Lumen Gentium 25, one's already obliged to accept these truths. So, one's not, quote, imposing at all, and if they were, it wasn't something new. This is already church doctrine. So, here again, when the Pope has an opportunity of saying this truth about the Blessed Mother, that she's the spiritual mother of you and me and everyone else on earth, this becomes an opportunity of a better articulation, more clarity. Look, in ecumenical dialogue, no one would be able to say, Catholics adore Mary. Catholics see Mary as the fourth person of the Trinity. I mean, people could say what they want, but they couldn't say it with integrity because now we'd have a solemn definition. We'd have a, the highest level of articulated truth saying, Catholics believe that Mary is a human being. She's a creature. 
she's immaculate and she uniquely helped Jesus in the task of redemption. That's going to help dialogue. That's going to help clarity of what we believe. So, once again, I encourage you to uh, look at the, the presentations during this Inside the Vatican uh, forum, which happened on March 25, 2010. Yeah, I think it's a headliner of Catholic News Today. And I think it's a headliner of what we need in the church. Look, with the situation, with attacks on our Holy Father, unrelenting attacks, false, vicious attacks on the Holy Father, sometimes, my friends, the best defense is an offense. And when Our Lady is brought into this, when the Pope exercises exactly what he's being attacked for, which is his papacy, when he exercises his papacy with power and peace and with Our Lady's protection, you can expect a strengthening of the papacy and also you're freeing Our Lady to do what she desires to do, and that is to fully exercise her intercessory power for the Church and the world today. I don't know about you, but I long for Our Lady to be able to do that. I think we all could use it. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli with Mary Cass saying, thank you, God bless, pray for the dogma, pray for our Holy Father.